So in this course uh, I am going to cover uh, uh, the welding processes and I am not going to discuss any metallurgy, there, there won't be any metallurgy, okay, no microstructures, no phase transmissions. So I will be talk about the physics of welding processes. So the, the physics behind the heat generation and, the, and, and the, the heat source generation, the reaction, okay. So what mechanism the, we generate heat and the pressure are both, heat and pressure, okay. That is what I'm, we are going to talk about it. So I will just show you the syllabus uh, what we are going to cover. So we divided into you know, seven chapters, this course when we design this course, welding process course, okay. We are going to cover the entire spectrum of uh, the welding processes that are um, commonly used for engineering applications, okay. So first we look at uh, the classifications of the welding processes uh, based on uh, various me the methodology we can classify the welding processes and, uh, and we will also look at the heat source, the principles behind the heat generation. So one of the, the very common most widely used welding process is arc welding process, okay. And we will go into understand so what is arc? how we generate heat in the arc. So what is that actually happening inside the arc that generates heat and we look at all the fundamental uh, governing principles, okay. So what are the reactions that are happening inside the arc, okay. So, uh, so what, what are the rate controlling factors that can be influencing the heat generation in the arc. So that is the first chapter we will understand and the, the physics behind the arc, okay. So then we will move on to the actual processes. Then we will use that arc and we can strike an arc by various ways, okay. So we can use uh, yeah, 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 non-consumable um, electrode or consumable electrode uh, or we can also use uh, uh, a plasma as well to generate heat. So we will move on to the each processes uh, in unit by unit. The first unit the physics of arc, we look, we understand the physics of arc, then we will move on to the second unit where we look about, we, we study about the, the gas tanks and arc welding, okay. And then principles begin the gas tanks and arc welding uh, and uh, the application of this process, uh, and what are the rate controlling factors, uh, what are the parameters which are going to affect the process stability and so on and so forth. And then the second, after second unit, third unit is uh, on a consumable welding process. So in gas tanks and arc welding, the tungsten electrode is not molten, whereas we can also strike an arc with an a consumable electrode. So that process are known as gas metal arc welding or manual metal arc welding or shielded metal arc welding, okay. And we look at uh, the variance of this process uh, and in this process uh, uh, of consumable uh, welding, we also transfer the molten consumable to onto the weld pool or material. Okay, so we will also see how the process characteristic can change the, the metal transfer characteristics, okay, metal transfer behavior. Again the principle behind what are the forces acting on the droplet when it detaches from the tip of the electrode, how we can manipulate the force so that we can change the shape of the droplet, okay. And then uh, how we can increase the productivity for example by varying the, the parameters of welding. And what are the optimum uh, transfer characteristics to achieve a best weld. So we are going to look at in third chapter about uh, the, all these physics behind uh, and the consumer welding processes, okay. And then fourth chapter is on uh, power sources. So it is also very important because we use uh, a power source to generate and current uh, um, as well as the voltage and we also regulate uh, these current and voltages for our own uh, uh, benefit so that we can stabilize the process. So we need to understand what is there inside the power source. So the power sources generate uh, the, uh, the uh, parameters, uh, the, uh, the heat generating parameters, mainly the current and voltage and of course we have a, a lot of uh, modification to current power source and we can have a com small computer inside the power source uh, so that all the parameters which are all important can be regulated. So we look at uh, a typical uh, welding power source uh, and uh, the characteristic of a uh, power source uh, from early 50s to the modern power sources which can have an inbuilt microprocessor and uh, synergically controlling the, the welding parameters which are actually used uh, for welding, okay. So, so upon looking at all this, uh, uh, the background, we will also move to the, the other welding processes. Uh, for example, uh, uh, resistance welding where we do not use arc, okay. So arc like in, in uh, the gas tanks arc or gas metal arc. 
but we will use dual heating okay so what is dual heating again so when a, when the current is passed on a conductor you get heated up right okay so dual heating so we will use uh, uh, dual heating mechanism to weld uh, two material okay so there are very commonly used welding processes that uses uh, a dual heating uh, it's also known as, known as resistance welding okay so there are variants of resistance welding resistance part resistance seam um, and projection welding for example or flash bed welding resistant upset welding okay percussion welding and how these again the physics began govern the heat generation in this process right and how we can modify uh, the parameters to achieve best weld so that's what we are going to look at in uh, chapter 5 and then uh, chapter 6 about uh, the, cha the processes which are very close to my heart okay so i have been working on these processes on uh, laser welding as well as electron beam welding again so laser is also can be used as a heat source same as electron beam right but again uh, it is not uh, 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 like in arc welding so where you can manipulate current and voltage laser welding it has its own characteristics the power distribution of power in the beam and again we need to understand the physics behind the optics the, the laser optics to control to manipulate the, the welding welding parameters okay and we will look at the again physics behind the, the laser welding and electron beam welding uh, some of the important factors that govern the stability of the process we look at the forces again acting on these welding processes how these are those are those forces are balanced uh, when you are using these welding processes so we'll understand uh, their governing uh, mechanisms in uh, achieving a good stable weld okay and then last chapter we'll move on to the solid state welding process where we don't really heat it up as high as you do it in arc welding or laser welding or resistance spot welding and you do it at a solid state uh, slightly elevated temperature but not uh, involving a liquid or melting okay so there are various processes that are getting commercialized nowadays uh, in a solid state uh, uh, welding so for example uh, re uh, friction friction welding friction stir welding okay and ultrasonic welding and explosive welding for example it's been there for quite some time it's still the commercial application is still limited and we can also look at resistant uh, diffusion bonding and adhesive bonding so this is the overview of the syllabus we are going to look at in this chapter as i said no microstructure no phase transmission no metallurgy right so this course is designed to give uh, uh, fundamentals about the welding process and this is very basic suppose if you are even employed in uh, some company and if a company uses a welding process and uh, we you want to look at how the process work and what are the physics behind it unless you understand the fundamental physics correct you can't manipulate you can't derive the advantage out of this process okay so that is the objective of this course the learning outcome is uh, given a welding process you need to understand so what are the principles physics behind the, the heat generation or pressure generation okay how we can manipulate the parameters such a way that in these physics the governing uh, fundamental can be manipulated the forces can be balanced to achieve a good weld so that is the objective of this course so you need to uh, be able to tell the uh, after attending this course so uh, what welding process can be suitable for a given application okay uh, because you know the again uh, you need to choose a welding process based on your needs unless you understand how a process work you can't never tell that this process is suitable or not or if other process is suitable or not okay it's clear because this is what we're going to talk about it right before going to into detail so i'll also tell the textbooks uh, which i'm going to follow for this uh, course so the main textbook um, i'm going to follow is uh, uh, professor john norish book on advanced welding processes so this book is available um, uh, uh, in our library and uh, e copy is also available right so so that's the textbook i'm going to use for majority of the chapters except the last chapter the solid state welding processes because uh, john doesn't like anything which doesn't involve liquid so so, so he, he never writes anything about solid state welding process so for solid state welding process i'll be using uh, uh, the book by uh, uh, Professor Messler, the second one, uh, Principles of Welding. 
Okay. So, these two are the textbooks I am going to use right? and the, for the first chapter the physics of uh, welding arc. So, that is very extensively covered in the third book on welding technology. Again the e-copy is available in our library, so you can follow that uh, for the first chapter on physics of uh, welding arc. Okay. So, again so these are all uh, textbooks um, I am going to use and uh, for Lancaster book is also useful for um, understanding the physics of uh, laser welding and the physics of arc. Okay. So, these four uh, textbooks uh, are already available in our library and you can choose and then um, you can refer accordingly, but if you attend the class regularly you do not need textbooks, you, know, you can always uh, use my slides um, and if you have any questions you can always ask me.